It's the early 20th century, and thousands are flocking to a bustling, busy, and thriving state. A state where fortunes are made from gold, silver, copper, and coal, mined from the rich and rugged land. A state where brand new railroads have connected its towns and cities to the rest of the country, bringing people, commerce, culture, and innovation. A state where women can vote, hold office, and serve on juries before any other state or territory. This is Wyoming when it was one of the Union's most prosperous and progressive states. But what happened to this Wyoming? Why did it lose its momentum and its population? How did it become the least populated state in the U.S. today? Wyoming is a huge state with very few people. It is the 10th largest state by area, roughly 11 times bigger than New Jersey. But New Jersey has 15 times more people. It has only 578,000 residents, the lowest population of any U.S. state by a wide margin. To put that in perspective, New York has 14 times more people than the entire state of Wyoming. Los Angeles has seven times more people, and Chicago has five times more people. Wyoming's population is so small that even the smallest states by area, Rhode Island and Delaware, have more than double the number of people. The average salary is $37,000, and the average house price is $338,000. The state is beautiful, yet it has experienced almost zero population growth because of complex economic, social, and political factors that all play a part. But before we get into those reasons, it's important to understand its geography. Wyoming is located in the mountainous west subregion of the United States. It is a landlocked state, bordered by six other states, Montana to the north and northwest, South Dakota and Nebraska to the east, Colorado to the south, Utah to the southwest, and Idaho to the west. The eastern part of Wyoming consists mainly of high plains and prairies that extend into Nebraska and South Dakota. The western part of Wyoming is dominated by mountain ranges such as the Rocky Mountains, Absaroka Range, Wind River Range, Teton Range, and Bighorn Mountains. The Great Plains of North America slope east from the Rocky Mountains, covering the eastern parts of Wyoming. And of course, Yellowstone National Park is located in the northwest corner, extending into Montana and Idaho. The Wyoming Territory was originally carved out of Utah, Dakota, and Idaho in 1868. However, Wyoming's journey to statehood was delayed until July 20th, 1890, due to its limited population falling short of 60,000 residents for statehood. Wyoming's congressional representative, Joseph Kerry, played a pivotal role in securing statehood by over-exaggerating the territory's population figures, which resulted in Wyoming becoming the 44th state. But something happened after it gained statehood. Over the next 20 years, the population started to surge. From 1890 to 1920, the state's population grew exponentially from under 60,000 to 145,965, according to the 1910 census. Then, just 10 years later, in 1920, the population increased to 194,402. This was an increase of 17.4% from the 1910 census and ranked Wyoming as the 36th most populated state. The ones paying attention have already calculated that in 1920, the population was almost 200,000, and now it's 600,000. That's 400,000 more residents, isn't that good? Well, not really. Let me explain. The population growth of Wyoming from 1920 to 2020 was only about 207%. That means Wyoming's population more than doubled in a century, which sounds impressive, but not when you compare it to other states. For example, the population growth of Nevada from 1920 to 2020 was a whopping 6,751%. That means that Nevada's population increased by 67 times in the same period. Other states like Florida grew 3,029%, Arizona 2,725%, California 1,510%, and Texas 1,072%. In fact, Wyoming had the lowest population growth rate of any state in the last century. So now we know the history of the population, let's look at the reasons why. Wyoming's economy is based on three main sectors, mining, agriculture, and tourism. These sectors are not very stable or diverse, affecting the population size and diversity in many ways. Mining is the most significant contributor to Wyoming's GDP, extracting coal, natural gas, oil, uranium, trona, bentonite clay, gypsum, limestone, and iron ore. Mining provides many jobs and income for Wyoming residents. Still, 
It also depends on global demand and prices, which can change rapidly and unpredictably. When the mining industry booms, more people move to Wyoming to work in the mines or related industries. When the mining industry busts, many people lose their jobs or move away to find other opportunities. This creates a cyclical and volatile population pattern that makes it hard for Wyoming to grow steadily and sustainably. For example, Wyoming's population growth rate of 2.3% from 2010 to 2020 was the second lowest of any state, only ahead of Illinois, minus 0.1%. The national average was 7.4%. Agriculture is another important industry in Wyoming, with cattle ranching being dominant followed by sheep raising and crop farming. Agriculture also provides many jobs and income for Wyoming residents. Still, it faces many challenges and risks, such as market fluctuations, environmental issues and competition. Wyoming farmers and ranchers have to deal with droughts, pests, diseases, wildfires, predators and regulations that affect their productivity and profitability. They also have to compete with other states and countries with more land, water, labor, technology and subsidies. These factors make agriculture a difficult and uncertain occupation that discourages many people from entering or staying in the industry. For example, Wyoming's agricultural output declined 9% from 2018 to 2019 due to low commodity prices and unfavorable weather conditions. Tourism is a growing source of income for Wyoming, with millions of visitors coming to see Yellowstone National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and Devil's Tower National Monument a sacred site for many Native American tribes, amongst others. Tourism provides jobs and income for Wyoming residents. Still, it also depends on the weather and the attractiveness of the natural attractions. Tourism is a seasonal industry that peaks in the summer months. Tourism is also a competitive industry that requires constant investment and innovation to keep up with the changing preferences and expectations of visitors. These factors make tourism a variable and vulnerable industry that does not guarantee a steady and reliable income for Wyoming residents. Wyoming's economy is not very diversified or resilient, which makes it hard for the state to attract and retain people who are looking for more opportunities and security. Wyoming has a low tax burden and a small government, which some people like because it gives them more freedom and independence. However, this also means that Wyoming has fewer public services and infrastructure than other states, such as healthcare, education, transportation, communication, and recreation. Wyoming has a strong sense of individualism and self-reliance, which some people admire because it shows their courage and character. However, this also means that Wyoming has less social cohesion and support than other states, such as neighborhoods, churches, clubs, and charities. Wyoming has a low racial and ethnic diversity, with about 90% of the population being white, 10% being Hispanic or Latino, and less than 5% being other races. Wyoming has a low religious diversity, with about 70% of the population being Christian, and less than 5% being other religions or non-religious. Although the state does not reject inclusion, it does mean that it is less favorable as a choice for potential residents looking at new states to move to as it could be harder to find a sense of community. Wyoming is somewhat of an old school state and one of the most conservative and Republican states in the country. Having voted for the Republican presidential candidate in every election since 1968, the state also has very unique and quite unequal political representation. They are the most overrepresented state in the US Senate with two senators for its small population of 578,000. This means it has equal voice and power in the federal legislation and confirmation as other states with much larger populations. However, they are the least influential state in the U.S. presidential election, with only three electoral votes for its small population of 578,000. This means that Wyoming has less weight and sway in the outcome of the election than other states with more electoral votes. Wyoming also has less attention and participation in the presidential election as it is usually considered a safe state for one party and ignored by the candidates and the media. For example, Donald Trump won Wyoming with 70% of the vote in 2020, and he did not campaign or visit the state at all. Wyoming has steady state representatives, with often the same person winning its congressional elections multiple for many years. For example, Liz Cheney, the daughter of former Vice President Dick Cheney, has been Wyoming's sole representative since 2017 
and she won her last election with 69% of the vote. John Barrasso has been one of Wyoming's senators since 2007, winning his first election in 2008 with 73% of the vote, and was re-elected in 2012 with 76%, and in 2018 with 67%. He replaced Craig Thomas, who died in office after serving as a senator for 13 years from 1994 to 2007. With such little changes, policy rarely alters, and things remain the same or similar for years. Wyoming has several political issues that are important to its residents, such as energy development and environmental protection, land use and management, healthcare and social services, education and workforce development. These issues often reflect the values and interests of Wyoming's economy and culture, such as freedom, independence, self-reliance, conservation, and patriotism. These issues also often create conflicts and controversies between Wyoming and the federal government or other states or groups over resources, rights, regulations, or responsibilities. In summary, Wyoming's politics and policies are another factor that could help to understand why the population of the state is so low. They create a population that is underrepresented, yet also overrepresented, but together totally uninfluential. They also create a conservative and unified culture. There isn't much wrong with that, just as long as you fit in. So far, we have seen how Wyoming's geography, climate, economy, culture, politics and policies affect its population size and diversity. But what is it like to actually live in Wyoming? How does it compare to other states in terms of quality of life? What are the advantages and disadvantages of living in the cowboy state? For nature lovers, Wyoming offers some of the most beautiful and diverse landscapes in the country, with mountains, plains, forests, lakes, rivers, canyons, geysers, hot springs, waterfalls, caves, fossils, and wildlife. You can enjoy every type of outdoor activity you could imagine, like hiking, camping, fishing, boating, biking, skiing, snowshoeing, wildlife viewing, photography, and climbing. But Wyoming also has harsh weather conditions that can make outdoor activities difficult or dangerous at times. You have to deal with cold winters, hot summers, strong winds, heavy snowfall, thunderstorms, tornadoes, floods, droughts, wildfires, and earthquakes. You also have to be prepared for the risks and challenges of living in a remote and rugged place, such as limited access to services and amenities, wildlife encounters and conflicts, and environmental hazards and disasters. For business owners, Wyoming has a favorable business climate that includes no income tax or corporate tax. Low regulations like no state minimum wage or mandatory sick leave, low costs of property prices and utility rates, and a high number of state business grants. However, it is a double-edged sword. Because of its low population, there is a limited market size. This means fewer customers, fewer workers, fewer niches, and overall fewer opportunities for growth. You have to deal with the challenges and uncertainties of operating in a small and isolated economy, such as low demand and competition, high dependence and vulnerability, and limited growth and development. Wyoming is amazing. With friendly communities, low crime rates, and low risk of natural disasters. Wyomingites have strong morals and ethics, such as honesty, integrity, responsibility, and respect. They tend to follow the Code of the West, which is a set of principles and guidelines that reflect a stoic cowboy frontier type character. Wyoming residents also tend to be patriotic and proud of their state and country, and they honor their history and heritage. Wyoming residents tend to be generous and compassionate, and they donate their time, money, and skills to various causes and organizations. Because there are so few people with low diversity, the state provides a high level of support and services to its residents, such as good infrastructure, schools, parks, neighborhoods, and churches. Because there are so few people, there are fewer malls, museums, events, restaurants, and other fun activities. Wyoming is one of the states that has experienced the least number of school shootings in the U.S., according to a database compiled by the Washington Post. Children are the most important part of life, and if you are blessed to have them, then knowing they are safe is worth everything. In this state, it seems you can raise a family with more peace and security than almost any other state. And for that, thank you, Wyoming. Overall, Wyoming has a low population that is unlikely to grow significantly in the near future. However, this does not mean that Wyoming is a bad or boring state. On the contrary, Wyoming has a lot to offer.
A high quality of life that includes stunning natural beauty, a favorable business climate, and a friendly community rooted in strong values. Wyoming also has a proud and loyal population that loves and defends its state and country. Wyoming is not for everyone, but it may be perfect for some. What do you think about Wyoming? Do you live there or have you visited there? Would you like to live there or visit there? Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos. See you next time.